brothers and sisters, I to we continue this Sacred Heart Novena um, in a credible place of providence. I'm at the moment helping celebrate some masses for the Dominican nuns on this, the near the Amalfi Coast in Italy in a place called Noccia Inferiore. And not far on a small train ride, 20 minutes away, is the, the great, great sanctuary of Pompeii, of, of the, the sanctuary of Our Lady of the Rosary. That this place was built um, in an incredible story of mercy, uh, the grace coming from the Lord's heart, the merciful heart of the Lord for us, and by Blessed Bartolo Longo, who many, many years ago, um, I read through Father Don Colloway and his book on the rosary, um, many treasures of gems of scriptures uh, and, and sayings of these saints. And I was always struck by this story of Blessed Bartolo Longo, because in one of the quotes that he said is that when we pray the rosary, we familiarize ourselves with Jesus in the company of Mary. And just like when we keep company with friends, they, 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 their presence starts to shape our hearts. Uh, the company that we keep affects who we are. As they say, you know, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. And so when we keep company with Our Lady in the Rosary, we're shaped by the mysteries, the friendship of Christ and all the characters that are in all the different mysteries of the Rosary. And Our Lady's influence, these saints, and of course, above all, the heart of Jesus, the sacred heart of Jesus, will shape us. And recently, um, some friends of mine who are part of us with the Dominican House of Prayer have published this book on this 54-day novena of Blessed Bartolo Longo. And I placed it in the Heart Reach chat a while ago. Um, that you can access it on the Dominican House of Prayer website if you want to, to get a copy of it. So let's get to the story. Incredible, incredible providence uh, here to do the novena and I only just discovered why. And I'll tell you a little bit about that in a, in a few moments. But who's Blessed Bartolo Longo? Blessed Bartolo Longo is a third order Dominican. So we claim him very proudly as a, as a Dominican family. And he, he brought, was brought up in a very faithful Catholic family when, it, when he was 10, his mom died. And from there, you could see he started to maybe stray away from God, which is so typical. When people come into counter with tragedy in their life, they start to question, how could there be a God? How could there be a good God? How could God let this happen to me? And so this he experienced and started to drift further and further away from, from his faith. And eventually, when he was at university, and uh, there were many ex-priests who left the faith, and they were preaching against the church and pre preaching against, you know, these so-called superstitions of faith and legends of the church, etc., etc. And through this, he, in particular, he said that he had a particular hate uh, for the Dominicans because the Dominicans were these priests who were preaching very valiantly against against these these false truths and trying to promote the truth of the faith and the reasonability of our faith, that our faith is rational, that we can think about it, we can talk about it and defend it with, 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 with vigor. And, uh, and, he, and these priests, these Dominican priests in particular, he was so intellectual and, and, and bright that they, those against, those preaching venom against the church particularly hate them and he did as well, he, he would confess that. And, but then eventually he started to get go to visit mediums, you know, to, to tarot cards and, 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 and occultists and spiritists. And so I guess still have a hunger for the spiritual, but started to, 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 to pursue it in the dark ways. And eventually he, he would become a Satanist and he would become he'd become ordained a satanic priest. He would he, he became a satanic priest and, and was involved with orgies and all kinds of sacrifices and and eventually he was he ended up in a in a great depression so trapped by satan so trapped by the evil forces that he ended up in an, an incredible oppression and darkness and, and, an, and an awful psychological state but yet that's what sin does sin chains us and we become addicted so we become we will lose our freedom in one sense we become to, like, the word is slavery you know it's true slavery sin is a slave you know we become under the the tyranny of the devil and 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 and, and therefore we lose more and more our the strength of our will and our heart and so he was in this incredible state of darkness and then he came across a, a catholic professor uh, pepe professor pepe who basically challenged him and said, do you want to be damned if you continue like this? Do you want to just continue in this psychological, morose, depressed state? Then he, he challenged him to start praying the rosary and st started to tell him that he should speak with a Dominican priest. So he ended up then speaking with a, a, a Dominican priest and it happened on the Feast of the Sacred Heart and they had long conversations. So this was incredible. This is the providential part that, that they met on the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. 
and uh, as I come in here there's a big statue up there of Jesus and it says come to me all peoples and so it was on that moment that incredible moment of mercy so so he started as a penance for all his darkness and all the satanic things he did he said that he he spent a year working in a hospital with incurables and praying but yet he found himself very low and despairing he couldn't believe that god would forgive him and have mercy on him then he remembered the words of 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 the dominican i believe or the professor that if he wants to be saved preach the rosary and and pray the rosary so then from that he committed the rest of his life to praying the rosary and preaching the rosary and there were so many miracles that followed from his work and his mission eventually uh, married under the advice of the, the pope a countess and together they spread devotion to the rosary and our lady wanted the shrine built here to the rosary and it's known for for incredible graces so i bring you here today with me